guys, welcome back to another video blog. This is Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach, certified diabetes educator, and IFM certified functional medicine practitioner. I am back today with another video blog, and today's topic is the Sweet Life Fitness Pyramid. We're going to talk about exercise today. I think we all know that exercise is good for diabetes. It's good for blood sugar control, whether we have type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes, whether we have really high blood sugar or blood sugar that's closer to normal. Exercise and physical activity is essential. If you need to lose weight, if you have prediabetes, metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular risks, or full-blown type 2 diabetes, we have to get moving. I don't think anybody's going to argue that, and I think you probably sitting there watching that know that as well. Today we're going to talk about the sweet life approach to physical activity. We call it the sweet life fitness pyramid. There's three types of exercise that I think are essential. We're going to break down each of those. So the three types of exercise in the sweet life fitness pyramid are number one, cardiovascular aerobic training. We call that fat burning cardio. Fat burning cardio is at the base of the pyramid. That's going to make up the majority of the time that you're going to spend doing physical activity or exercise. Right above that we have resistance training and resistance training you'll do about uh, three to four days a week, two to four days a week. And then at the very tip of the pyramid is sprint training. We're going to talk about exactly what that is. Now, each of these forms of exercise has unique health benefits. Aerobic exercise, which again we call fat burning cardio, which is at the base of that pyramid, has been shown to reduce blood sugar, improve insulin sensitivity, reduce stress, reduce visceral fat, improve lipids, and improve cardiovascular health. Resistance training, which again makes up the next level of the Sweet Life Fitness Pyramid, has been shown to enhance insulin sensitivity, to improve energy, to increase strength, increase lean muscle mass, improve bone density, and to enhance mitochondrial function, which is very important for blood sugar management and control. And again, at the very tip of the pyramid, we have sprint training. Sprint training has been shown through research to offer superior cardiovascular benefits. It's been shown to stimulate the release of growth hormone. It's been shown to reduce blood pressure and improve insulin sensitivity. And some research has shown, again, greater improvements in both body composition and in glucose control. So as you look at the Sweet Life Fitness Pyramid, again, at the very bottom, is the fat burning cardio. And we wanna shoot for about 150 minutes per week of aerobic exercise. Again, that could be five times 30 minutes per day, or three times 50 minutes per day, or somewhere in between. But 150 minutes per week minimum is your goal for aerobic fat burning cardio exercise. You can get that through walking or swimming or biking or jogging. You can do machines at the gym like the elliptical machine. Or you can just go out and play with your kids or your dog or throw the frisbee around. But you want to get some good cardiovascular exercise uh, in the heart rate zone, somewhere between 55-75% of your maximum heart rate. Resistance training, as you see on the pyramid, should be done about two to four times per week. You don't need to spend a long time with this. About 15 to 20 minutes is fine. And you can use dumbbells or hand weights. You can do body weight exercises, something like the total gym. Or again, if you belong to an exercise facility, you can use the Nautilus or weight machines. And sprint training, again, which shows the greatest benefits for blood sugar control and insulin sensitivity, should be done about once to twice a week. And this can take just five minutes or 10 minutes. Uh, it doesn't have to take a long time, and that's one of the greatest benefits of it. You could do something like stair climbing or spinning on your bike, pedaling really fast, jumping jacks. And I'm going to have a series of exercise routines called 
10 minute blood sugar burners. So make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch out for those. Now, a lot of people will ask, when is the best time to exercise? And that does vary based on the type of exercise you're doing. We're talking about the cardio, the fat burning cardio exercise. That can be done any time during the day. And really the best time is the time that you're gonna to remember to do it. When you go for a walk, you can go in the morning or you can go after a meal, like after dinner in the evening is another good time to do that. Resistance training, again, two to four times a week. There's actually studies showing that resistance training will show its greatest gains and greatest benefits if you do that at night. So that's something to consider is doing the resistance training at night. And lastly, sprint training can be done anytime during the day. But for people who have the dawn phenomenon where they get that morning high blood sugar, it's best to avoid doing high intensity training in the morning because it's going to stimulate those counter regulatory hormones like cortisol and adrenaline, which can drive your blood sugar up even higher. So it's best to do that high intensity sprint training later in the day as well. And lastly, just a few considerations when we talk about exercise and fitness. Number one, if you have diabetic peripheral neuropathy, it's very important to inspect your feet often. I mean daily, multiple times a day. Get a mirror, lay it on the ground, look at your foot from all angles. If you have any open cuts or wounds, Make sure you clean those thoroughly and cover them with some bandages. If they become red, make sure you go see your doctor or podiatrist. Proper footwear is really important. You don't want to rub the feet and create ulcers or uh, wounds in the feet. So make sure your, your uh, socks are clean and dry and make sure your shoes fit comfortably. Also with the feet, it's important to make sure that your toenails are clipped and well-groomed to prevent injury. Another factor is cardiovascular health. It's important before starting any exercise program to check with your primary care physician or cardiologist to make sure you're healthy enough to do high-intensity interval training or resistance training. Uh, most people are fine to do some uh, low-intensity fat-burning cardio exercise, but check with your doctor on that. And lastly, Push yourself, but don't push yourself too hard. We don't want to get injured. There's no sense in pulling a muscle or hurting a joint and then having to stop exercising altogether. So make sure you stay within your boundaries. Stretch before and after your exercise so you don't hurt yourself. All right, that is the Sweet Life Fitness Pyramid. I hope you enjoyed this video today. Follow this exercise routine to achieve better blood sugar control and to ultimately reverse type 2 diabetes. For more of my video blogs, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking this link right up here. I want to thank you for watching. This is Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach, and remember to keep climbing and to never give up. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Uh...